while back, I was just relaxing, not doing much of anything at all, when a thought occurred to me. Ear curtains. Let me explain. I've got one of these bad boys, an industrial bar piercing, and I can't help but notice that it doesn't look all too dissimilar to certain types of curtain hardware. Now I usually just assume that most people are about as weird as I am. So when I searched for this concept, I was shocked to find absolutely nothing. It seems like such a simple concept, so if you've seen anyone else do this, please send me a link. I actually want to see other interpretations of this idea. Since this does involve a piercing, I just want to give a quick disclaimer before we get started. I've had my industrial bar for about eight years now. It is a fully healed, fully mature piercing. I do not recommend doing this with a fresh piercing. A new industrial bar should have a well-fitted surgical steel bar that is left in for like six months to a full year, just depending on how quickly your body heals, to assure that it heals completely. If your piercing is fresh, do not do this to your ear. And if it is healed and you want to try this, be gentle putting it in, be aware that it's there, and probably don't leave it in for long periods of time. <laughs> I don't I don't want anybody getting a piercing snagged for a meme. So let's make these curtains. I started with this light pink scrap fabric. But bear in mind that this original version didn't end up working out. I did show the whole process here, so we'll consider it a mock-up. I used the 1 inch grid on my cutting mat to square the fabric with a rotary cutter. I originally cut my curtains 2 inches wide by 2.5 inches long, but that wound up being way too big. My final curtains wound up being an inch and a half wide, about an inch finished. I also had this tiny piece of scrap lace that was almost perfect in size, so I used it as trim. The edges of my fabric will be finished with a narrow rolled hem. I rolled and pressed the edge of the fabric over an eighth of an inch, and then roll it again another eighth of an inch. If you're keeping track of the math, that's about half an inch total of seam allowance. I want to stitch the hem and attach the lace at the bottom of the curtain all at once, so I'm pinning it to my pressed hem now. And we stitch it down in place. After we're done at the machine, we'll iron our pieces flat again. Unfortunately, the thickness of our polyester Venice lace makes it impossible to narrow hem, so I just folded each side over a quarter of an inch. The edge is still partially raw, but this is really just a special occasion type thing. It's not like it's gonna go into a washing machine. And it did wind up just being a mock-up anyway. And this gets stitched down as well. I originally wanted this style of curtain with the grommets and the accordion folds, but since grommets are too big, we'll embroider some eyelets. We just pierce the eyelet holes open with an awl and then use some embroidery floss to whip stitch the hole open. Our prototype is finished, but I'm sure you can see by the bulk on the industrial bar that it wasn't ideal and it did not fit in my ear. No worries though. Failure is just an opportunity to learn. So back to my scrap collection. I decided I wanted something thinner and lighter, and I actually had a relative that worked in upholstery at one point, so this piece is actual curtain liner. This time I just made a 3 inch by 3 inch square and then cut it in half for dramatically narrower curtains. I added some length because I decided I wanted to nix the eyelet idea entirely. I made a narrow hem on the sides of these as well, however I should note that my machine absolutely hated this fabric. 
it didn't agree with the feed dogs at all, so my stitching isn't the prettiest, but I mean, are we really taking this project that seriously? I strategically cut my pieces so that the top edge would be on the selvage, which is a part of the fabric that doesn't fray. So I can just turn it over once, about a quarter of an inch, to make my casing for the industrial bar. This will not only remove bulk, but it'll be easier to put it on the bar itself. And for the bottom hem of the curtain, I just do another narrow hem. So here's round two. I love how this version actually looks like dollhouse curtains a little bit. You know, now that I think about it, you could probably just use dollhouse curtains for this whole thing instead. And now the reveal. The finished look. Oh yeah, ear curtains. Imagine a world where you can finally go to parties again, and you see this person. She's normal, she's normal, she's normal. Shit, never mind. She's weird. To put this whole arrangement in my ear, I start with a clean bar. The bar goes through the first hole, and then the curtains slide on through the casing. Once the curtains are fully on the bar, you can slide it through the second hole. And then finally the bead gets screwed back on. Also note that my ear skin is really reactive, so it gets red just by touching it. If you experience any unusual redness, that's probably not a good sign. That could be too much pressure from the amount of fabric or an allergy to the type of fabric, so I would definitely be cautious about that. And just above all, go very slowly and be very gentle when putting your ear curtains in. <laughs> Again, this is more of a party look. I probably wouldn't recommend it for long periods of time, but can we just take a moment? Can we just take a moment? Ear curtains. That's all I have to say. So <laughs> this is how I'm coping with the world right now. <laughs> what has been giving your life purpose and meaning lately? <laughs> um, that's all for today. I just want to say um, ear curtains just one more time and that I hope everyone has a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>